Hello and welcome to Upper Scioto Valley High School where Reisner Court will play host to the latest edition of the Hardin County, Hardin County rivalry game between the Kenton Wildcats and Upper Scioto Valley Rams. I'm Nate Garlock alongside Darren Gilbert. And Gil, whenever you get two teams that are so closely located, it doesn't matter if you're beginning of the season, middle of the season, end of the season, these games always have a bigger feel to them. Oh yeah, this is a rivalry game, week game and it goes back a long, long time. Everybody seems to have a circuit on the schedule and uh, nothing better than to have it early on in the early month of December uh, as we get near the holidays. Upper Scioto Valley coming off of a victory last night against the Lincoln View. We'll look to keep the winning ways going. Kenton fell to a tough cold water team. They'll be looking to right the ship and get another win in the column. Take a look at tonight's starters. First, for the Kenton Wildcats, they're going to start number one, Corbin Johnston. Number two, Blaine Bashong. Number three, or excuse me, number 25, Gavin Payne, wearing the uh, alternate uniform tonight. So they had a number change for Gavin. Number four, Ethan Yoder, and number 13, Dawson Miller. USV will begin with the basketball. We'll take a look at their starters. And they start number two, Alex Sanders. Number three, Andrew Kendall. Number 10, Hunter Damron. Number 22, Mason Thompson. And number 23, Maddox Underwood. Look on the inside, goes off the back of the iron, but USV able to get the offensive rebound. The putback no good as Sanders couldn't connect. Yeah, that's three point blank shots and two offensive rebounds. If you're the Wildcats, You've got to clean that up, and you've got to clean it up quickly because USB is so doggone physical and aggressive around the basket, especially on the boards. Now Kenton with basketball for the first time here tonight, trying to look the inside, nothing there, so they're going to let the three-pointer go. They can't get it to connect. Nice rebound by Yoder. Got his defender to leave his feet. Gets the two. You know, there's, there's one of the most improved players in the area, Ethan Yoder. He's a basketball junkie, gets into the gym, Nice footwork right there, finishing it off. Little one, two, two, three quarter court to slow the Rams down. USV able to get out of that pressure, slow things down a little bit. Here's Sanders. They're moving around the perimeter as they take a look towards Coach White to get the play. Continuing to move with the pressure. A nice job at that time by Maddox Underwood coming off of the screen and gets this game tied at two. Yeah, him and Sanders last night combined for 42 against Lincoln View in their victory. Nice quick step on the inside by Dawson Miller. Yeah, that's too easy if you're the Rams defensively letting go to the strong hand, turning the corner all the way to the rim. Here comes the trap along the sideline. Going to have the first whistle of the game. I think they got Johnson. Johnston, excuse me. Number one, Corbin Johnson picks up his first of the game. 6.09 left to go here in the opening quarter. Underwood gets the ball inbounds to Sanders. He's going to go one-on-one, -on -one working against Payne. He's got to kick it back out. Sanders going to shoot the three. That one's no good. Yoder comes up with the rebound. He's going to push the tempo before slowing things up. A little hesitation move, though. Trying to see if he couldn't go baseline, but played nicely by Thompson. Right now, both teams can't quite find the touch from deep as the Rams come up with the rebound. And you see Kenton right there trying to get the trap and reach in, get the jump ball call. Possession arrow favors the Wildcats. Yeah, that's a good job by Johnston trailing the basketball, getting his hands in there and securing it, not trying not to slap at it. And the official right there in front, Braden Sauter, called it a held ball. Rashawn now, nice crossover, gets into the air. Looked like he thought somebody might be cutting, but when they weren't, and had to dump it off to a teammate. And then Johnston turns it over. Yeah, that's a tough pass right there. Right idea, bad angle. Kendall hits from three. First three-pointer of the game as he connects on the home sa savings and loan of Kenton three-pointer. 5-4. USV on top. Kenton with the basketball. Sean going to pull up from three off the front of the rim. Tracked down by Thompson. Now here comes Underwood. Kicks it down into the corner. Three-pointer on its way. That one's no good. Rebound down to Kenton. Fight underneath and then just a little bit yeah, of a that push. Yeah, that's, that's obvious. That's just a mental mistake yep. by Thompson. He 
<laughs> that one you <laughs> got to let go. Extension. He's like, he's like well, well, just give him a little nut. See yeah, can't just, help we can't get him out of bounds. Out of bounds. <laughs> so Thompson's going to pick up his first foul. Yeah, got to be a little more discreet. Hip check or something, but not with the hands. Yoder with the basketball, tries to get into the lane, gets cut off by under with nice backdoor pass, finishing sure at the glass from Miller. He has four in the quarter. Kenton staying with the pressure, trying to see if they can't get a couple extra possessions. Nice job getting into the passing lane that time by Payne. Now that length right there paid off with the deflection and the turnover. Deep three for Kenton, that one's gonna be no good. Underwood tracks it down, he pushes the tempo, gets in the lane, takes the contact. And it wasn't a terrible idea that time by Miller, but he was way too late sliding over. He knew that contact was coming, moved his arms too much. Yeah, if Underwood gets it, Nate, he's really, really good in the open court. And like you said, I think Miller was just trying to slow him down and tried to get that cheap charge call right there and got caught a little bit too late. Yeah, Alex Sanders coming back into the game. Underwood, three-point try on its way. That one's going to be no good. Tipped away by Thompson, but he's going to get whistled for the foul. That'll be his second. I think they got him with another push. Thompson doesn't even wait for the buzzer. He knew that Coach White was going to take him out after that second foul. And he indeed does. He'll take a seat. Andrew Kendall coming back into the game. Appears to be... Steven Piper in for the Wildcats for Dawson Miller. Piper wearing zero. The alternates are going to mess me up a little bit tonight, Gil. I have different numbers. I tried to help you, partner. <laughs> I tried. Right, you did. Going to have another whistle underneath the basket. This time it was in the act of shooting. So Corbin Johnson's going to take a trip to the Kenton Moose free throw line. Get the first free throws of the night. Johnson's first is good. 7-5, Kenton on top. One free throw still to come. Can't connect on the second. Nice box out by Sanders there as he comes up with the rebound. Underwood drops it off, feeds to the inside. Here's Sanders. He gets double teamed, trying to get out of trouble. Kicks it back out. Kendall lets the three-pointer go. That one's no good. Yoder goes up high, gets the rebound, and now he's going to bring it up the floor. Yeah, that was a heck of an athletic rebound right there. He went up to the, at its peak and snatched that. Yoder's going to try the deep three, and that one's good. He connects on a home savings and loan of Kenton three-pointer. Coming in, averaging 15 a contest. Another trap there along the sideline. Kendall gets out of it, kicks it off. Three-pointer on its way. That one's no good over the backboard, and it'll go back to the Wildcats. Substitution coming back into the game as Dawson Miller will check back in. Elaine Bouchon will take a seat. Yeah, Coach White's a little bit concerned right now that they're living and dying with the jump shot instead of attacking it. He wants to see some attack to the rim. 10-5, the Wildcats on top, in with the basketball. Here's Piper, going to drive baseline. Gets cut off, has to get rid of it. Payne lets the three, or excuse me, just a long two. But either way, that one was a nice shot, and it goes down. And that's big for that young man. He went scoreless last night against Coldwater. It's good to see him get off the schneid here with 2.30 to go in the first quarter. Going baseline off the glass. That one's no good as Bo Sanders can't connect. Rebound comes down to Payne. Payne, he's going to drive. Works against Sanders. Has to kick it back out. Piper, three-pointer. Good. Piper with another home savings and loan of Kent. Three-pointer. And Coach White wants to take a timeout and talk to his team. Kent's on top, 15-5. to five. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard is brought to you by Crichton Aerial Applications. Crichton Aerial Applications provides you with custom liquid and granular crop applications of all your, or from our innovative drone system. 
Check out our videos and information on our Facebook page, Crichton Aerial Applications. So Coach White wanted to take the time out. Saw the score starting to get away from him a little bit here in this first quarter as they find themselves down double digits early. And I think for Kenton, this is a very important start. You know, we talked about they had the loss last night to Coldwater. And the talk going around um, from the, those who were there last night was they just got off to a slow start, dug themselves a hole that they couldn't get out of. And you see the exact opposite here tonight. Yeah, getting a good start, especially on the road, is huge. That last foul, if we got a charge, that's a good call. Dip the shoulder, good job by Alexander stepping in there, taking that charge. That last foul on Kenton was on Dawson Miller, his second. So Gavin Payne picks up the foul, that is his first. Fortunate play for USV to stop the offensive threat. Damron for three. This one's gonna be no good, Yoder comes up with the rebound. Yeah, Mr. Damron, he's a hot shooter. If he can get hot on that three-point line, he can carry the Rams. Unfortunately, right now he's 0 for 3 from outside the arc. Some miscommunication that time by the Wildcats as they had two players in the same area. Ball's going to go out of bounds. Last touch by Kenton. Minute 29 left to go here in the opening quarter. We have a 10-point game. Alex Sanders bringing the basketball up for the Rams as they try to get out of the pressure brought on by the Wildcats. Underwood, he gets it back just past midcourt. They look towards Coach White, wait for the play to come in. Looks like there's a little bit of confusion. As USD just a little out of sync right now. Bo Sanders was trying to get that inside to Alex Sanders. Yeah, trying to isolate him on the box where he can be effective right now. You know, he's missed a couple chippies early. Nice back cut. And there, just what we were talking about. Sanders on the inside as he's able to connect for his first two of the night. Yoder, turnaround jumper. That one's going to be no good. Fight for the rebound. Going to be last touch by the Rams. Yeah, Stephen Piper, really good job going after that shot. Yoder a little bit quick on that release, but Stephen Piper's effort right there. Kept it alive, batted it off a USV player and out of bounds. Here's Payne working on the inside, kicks it back out. Piper, he's going to drive with the right hand off the glass and gets that one to go. Pretty scoop move there, driver slasher action. Got it to the rim and finished. This one's going to be picked off. Bashong read it the whole way, drops it off to Yoder. He can't finish, though. Great defense by Sanders. Sure was. And last touch by Kenton. Alex Sanders did a, a great job of getting back, playing clean defense, making sure he didn't get whistled for a foul. And ended up resulting in a turnover for his team. 20 seconds left to go here in the first quarter. Rams have this one poked away, back-to-back -back turnovers. Oh, nice steal there by Underwood. Let's see if he can get it to convert. He's going to spin and lays it in. Underwood, four here in the quarter. 17-19, the ball is loose. Here's Bo Sanders, going to have to get rid of it quickly. Underwood, I think Underwood lost a little bit of where, he, where the clock was, and he didn't get that one off in time. So one quarter is gone. And that Kent finds themselves on top, 17 to 9. We'll step aside and be back with the second quarter here on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's three point sponsors Home Savings and Loan of Kent. Home Savings and Loan of Kent is committed to serving our community since 1888, offering infinite opportunities and services you can count on. Home Savings and Loan, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Welcome back to Reisner Court here at Upper Scioto Valley. I'm Nate Garlock alongside Darren Gilbert. Gil, fast-paced action. That first quarter flew right by, relatively clean. Doesn't really matter as we start the second quarter as all the team fouls erase with the new rule anyway. But Kenton getting off to a very quick start, finds themselves on top, 17-9. And, and I agree with you. The first six minutes was very clean play. That last two minutes at both ends of the floor turned into some sloppiness, didn't it? A lot of turnovers, and that's partly what got USV back under that double-digit margin, cutting it back into 
eight points. And we're going to have another foul this time as you see Blaine Bouchon, he's really playing hard. We've seen him come up with a couple of turnovers, almost came up with one here early in this possession. And then as he's trying to fight through the screen, he's going to pick up the foul. Yeah, I think him and Dameron got t tied up a little bit, and they got him on the second action right there. Good piece of officiating, talking to both players. Here's Underwood, inbounds it from underneath his own basket. This one's going to be kicked. There's Dawson Miller got a piece of it. And the Rams get an opportunity here to redo. Sanders, he takes it, works through some traffic, gets it back out to Underwood up top, and he's going to orchestrate the offense and get everybody set. Bo Sanders looking for somewhere to go with it. Drops it back off to Underwood. Underwood pulls up, shot no good off the back of the iron, but we have a whistle. As yeah, Maddox, that's Miller, that's three. And Maddox Underwood is going to take a trip to the Kenton Moose free throw line. And it is, you're right. So foul number three for Dawson Miller. And neither one of these teams go particularly deep on their bench. Kenton a little bit deeper than USV is, but neither team can really afford anybody uh, uh, to be in foul trouble here no, tonight. No, 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 you, you can't. That's, that's, you are so correct. And, you know, Bench-wise, both ball clubs play about seven to eight total. Maddox, second free throw on its way. That one's no good. Sean comes up with the rebound. Came in shooting 70% at the charity stripe. Did Mr. Underwood. Back down to a seven-point deficit. Kenton on top. Three-pointer on its way for Piper. That one's no good. Alex Sanders comes up with the rebound. He's going to push the tempo now. Finds Underwood down in the corner. Three-point try, no good. Fight for the rebound. Yoder comes up with it for a second. But then Underwood came flying around. He got into the mix. And Yoder, I believe, is going to get whistled for that foul. And no, they're no, it's actually, actually going to go it's on, going on, on Underwood. Underwood. Yeah. It looked like I thought Underwood might have gotten to that ball first, but the angle he took, he made the contact, and the official makes the call. Yeah, the Wildcats really lucky right there because Underwood had a free pass at a three. He's already had five coming into last night's contest. And he had a free look right there. Could have cut that thing down to four points if it went in. Wildcats caught a break. Another substitution in for Kenton. As we see number three, Tavion Gillespie come in. Here's Yoder. Yoder, he works baseline against Underwood. Tries to get it over to the corner, but going to be tipped out by Bo Sanders. So action slowed here after a fast-paced first quarter. Both teams are starting to get a little bit more comfortable, filling each other out, the defenses. Are now you starting can tell to settle both, in a bit. both teams have scouted one another. Coaches are up. Yoder with the deep three. That one's no good. Payne gets the rebound, kicks it back out to Piper. He sends a three, and that one's good. Yeah, that's a big one right there. Second opportunity, the Wildcats right there cashing in on that trifecta. Steven Piper now has two home saving and loan of Kenton three-pointers. As Sanders, I think, just started to lose that one as it gets poked away. So it goes flying, hits that back wall, and it will stay with the Rams. This one's going to go all the way into the backcourt. Sanders smartly let that one go. As for a second there, it looked like he was going to try to reach it. And if he didn't grab that one in, he'd had the backcourt violation. Sanders trying to get it inside. Okay, he missed him the first time, Nate. He had him on the first look. And then as soon as he turned away from it, the defender slipped around him. Payne doing a nice job on the inside. Got his hands on that one to knock it out. So it stays with USV. See Alexander is going to work against Payne. Looks to drive, stops, kicks it back off to Underwood. Underwood, he's going to drive, gets cut off. The Kenton defense has been up to the task so far tonight. That three-pointer no good, but fell right into the hands of Bo Sanders. Put back, no good. Yoder ends up with it. He's going to push it up ahead to Piper. Piper thought about it for a second, actually lost the ball. A great hustle play by Kendall to get that one. He gets it to Alex. Alex tries to go high off the glass. He can't get it. 
Another push ahead to Piper. Piper one-on-one, -on -one, dumps it off to Yoder, and a great finish that time by Ethan Yoder. Unselfish play there by Mr. Piper. Back and forth during that possession. Each team had a couple of opportunities. Kent finally able to cash in. Kendall trying to get around that Wildcat trap along that sideline. We've seen them do that almost every possession so far for USV. And as he tried to go around, steps out of bounds as the official was right there. Kendall will take a seat. And we have Mason Thompson coming back into the game. Thompson has two fouls, so he'll have to be careful. Don't want to pick up that third here in the first half. Five minutes left to go here in the half. Yoder sets up the three-pointer. That one's going to be no good. Rebound comes down to USV. Sanders going to bring it up. Splits the defense. And he is going to be fouled as Gavin Payne got a little too much, too much contact. A little too much arm on that one, huh? That's three team fouls here in the quarter for Kenton. Still two before two to go, excuse me, before USD will go to the free throw line. Right now, USV just doesn't quite seem, uh, you know, out of sync or in rhythm. There's just something that seems a little bit off right now. Is this Kenton defense is causing them problems, Gil? Well, they're not they're not lunging after the basketball. They're just walling up and making USV, you know, shoot uncomfortable shots, whether it be a step through or up and under or a turnaround jump shot. But you're right, they just do not look comfortable. They seem to appear to be a little bit out of sync offensively in the rhythm and the flow of the game. Underwood almost got that one. Yoder did a great job. He went up high with some contact and a little bit of Sanders. a roll of the ankle, but he looks like he's going to be able to walk that one off. As he's going to make a trip to the Kenton Moose free throw line. Sanders does pick up that foul. That is going to be his first. As Ethan Yoder lines up his first free throw. Shot is up, and it is good. You know, like I mentioned earlier, what a good kid, and he just works exceptionally hard. And You can tell by his skill level how much he's improved. Coming in, shooting almost 69% on his two-point tries. Yoder lines up his second shot. This one's good as well. He now has nine on the night so far. As Kenton pushes their lead to 14, they're on top, 24 to 10. Sean come back into the game, and Yoder's going to get a second. He's just going to keep walking, trying to stretch out that ankle. Underwood takes the handoff, drops it down. Damron for three. That one's good. Yeah, that's a big shot for that young man. He's very, very conscientious of where that three-point line is coming in, shooting just under 45% on the year. Hunter Damron has his first Home savings and loan of Kenton three-pointer, but then just like that, we have an answer by Gavin Payne as he gets himself a home savings and loan of Kenton three-pointer. 27-13, another turnover. Lesby, he's going to line one up. That one's good. Tavion has a home savings and loan of Kenton three-pointer. Everybody's hitting from downtown right now. We got a timeout on the floor. Kent in control on top, 30 to 13. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's free throw sponsor is Kent Moose Family Center. Kent Moose is Hardin County's home for great food, fellowship, and friends. That's the Kent Moose 428 in Kenton and online at kentmoose428.com. I'd like to thank tonight's scoreboard sponsor, Crichton Aerial Applications. Crichton Aerial Applications provides you with custom liquid and granular crop applications, all from our innovative drone system. Check out our videos and information on our Facebook page, Crichton Aerial Applications. Welcome back to Reisner Court. As Kenton has been all over USV right from the jump as they've pushed this out to a 17-point lead. 3.30 left to go here in the first half. As Maddox Underwood going to bring it up for USV. They're trying to find some answers on offense. Thompson looking for somewhere to go with it. Has to reverse it. Underwood tries, but he gets cut off. 
Right now, USD just doesn't seem know, to know what to do when maybe A and potentially even option B aren't there. They just look a little bit lost as Kenton's defense is just all over him. Great back door right sure there was, though, Damron. by Damron. Good pass entry there by Underwood. A very unselfish play. Their goal here, partner, should have tried to get it under double digits if you're USB. They got to get a couple of stops here. Yoder has that one blocked out of bounds. And, and the officials are going to talk about it. And they're going to change the call. One was pointing the other way. One official was giving it back to uh, Kenton. But after talking about it, the other official says, nope, last touched by Kenton, so USD ball. Yeah, they conferred. All three officials conferred right there, so they did the right thing. They all came to an agreement. It was going to go back to Right now, you can the tell Rammies. USB is just telegraphing what they want to do with it. They're coming up. They're only looking for the one spot, and Kenton is doing a great job of identifying that and jumping those passing lanes. They've almost came up with a ton of turnovers, and here's another one. And somehow the Rams keep possession. Underwood going to go baseline, works against Yoder, comes up through the defense, and even after all of that, they're going to still find have his an way to the charity stripe in points. He? Yep. Because that did not look good. I think Underwood just had to get rid of it because he was very conscious of that five count. And so he threw it in just to see what would happen. And somehow, through that whole um, series of events. Scrum. He, Scrum's he, a good he, word. He ended up with the ball and yeah. then back at the free throw line. Yeah, Bo Sanders got on the floor. And, you know, that young man is, is a strong kid for a freshman that took the basketball, got it to Underwood. He found his way, slithered his way to the rim, going to get two free throws. Maddox Underwood is able to connect on his first Kenton Moose free throw. He still has one coming. Two twenty-seven left to go. Maddox lines up his second shot. Shot is up, and it is no good. Yoder with the rebound. Yeah, a little flat on that one. Got to get a more lift on it. So now you see USV coming with a little bit of pressure. Trying to see if they can't create some extra opportunities, but Wildcats able to get the ball over midcourt. Three-pointer on its way. That one's good. Catch and shoot by Blaine Bouchon, and that is his first points of the night. He has himself a home savings and loan of Kenton three-pointer, and they needed that one as it had been a 6-0 run by USV. Tried to cut into the lead, but we have another foul. And what's important about that foul, with a minute 59 left to go, that is team foul number five for Kenton. So for here on out, USD is going to be shooting free throws anytime they're fouled. Yep. New rule implemented. Maddox Underwood can't connect on the first Kenton Moose free throw. They'll have one more. 70% at the charity stripe. Got a real good release, just sometimes leaves it a little too flat, not enough lift on it. Let's see if we get a little more lift on this one. And that one's no good. Great hustle by Bo Sanders. And Blaine Bouchon is all over the place tonight. Almost got it, not that one. Ends up knocking it out of bounds though, so it'll stay with USV. Maddox Underwood, the only Ram that has gone to the free throw line and he is two of six tonight from the charity strike. Bo Sanders has to get rid of it, saying that's gonna be illegal as the freshman kicked that elbow out on that screen right in front of the official. And now you see Lesby going to be in a little bit of pain and discomfort as he hobbles off the court. Yeah, that's, that's going to be a thigh bruise right there. Okay. That's a knee to the thigh appears. Yeah, and you can see now that's where he's grabbing. He's going to feel that one for a while, isn't he? You know, Upper, Upper's been getting to the free throw line. They've been there 46 times coming into last night's contest. You know, you think about that, that's 23 per, per contest. And I think right there tells you everything you need to know about how the night is going for Kenton. A complete miscommunication. They throw the ball the length of the floor. It looks like it's destined to go out of bounds. They have to catch it from going into the backcourt. Somehow still end up with the ball in a great shot. And if it wasn't for a quick timeout by the Kenton it's coaching another staff, two. it's another bat made basket. So we have another full timeout by Kenton this time. We're going to step aside and be back on WOSA.
Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard is brought to you by Crichton Aerial Applications. Crichton Aerial Applications provides you with custom liquid and granular crop applications, all from our innovative drone system. Videos and information are on our Facebook page, Crichton Aerial Applications. So Kenton takes the quick timeout as Coach Miller was afraid they were about to lose that possession. And we'll see if it was a good uh, timeout or not as they had had the made basket almost coming up with the steal that time was Maddox Underwood. Minute 27 left to go. And, you know, Gil, we could hear from all the way up here, we could hear, hear Coach White in that USV huddle. He was letting his team have it, trying to find some life out of those guys. Yeah, he's trying to trying to light the fire to get him to go here. You know, the way Kenton's shooting the basketball, you know, they can't ill afford Upper Soda Valley to give them any more points. I think they got Bo Sanders there with a the push inside. I believe that's his second. And it does, in fact, go against Bo, and that is his second. Kent will going to keep the basketball. The song underneath the basket gets it out to Piper. Piper works against Sanders. Nice job finding a cutting Yoder. Yoder, though, has to pull it back out as the Rams' defense did a nice job swarming to the basketball and not letting any lanes open. Another almost miscommunication as Trenton DeLong had come into the game, and now he loses it. Bo Sanders comes up with the steal. Big possession here with under a minute left to go. Underwood lets the three-pointer go. That one's no good. Sean comes up with the rebound. Cameron trying to guard Sean closely, not wanting him to go anywhere. There's the trap. Yoder has to pass out of trouble, finds Piper. The long underneath, extra pass coming as Kenton is doing an excellent job of moving the ball. Yeah, playing keep away. Nice move by Yoder. Yoder. Good strong take to the basket. Yep, Yoder just decided he was going to do it himself that time. Cut right through the defense and finished at the rim. Sanders with the spin move off the glass. That one's no good. I think they got Yoder right there with the push from on the rebound. And we're just seeing them. They're just off by a little bit. We, they've had a lot of looks on the Upper, inside and right at oh, the Oh, they've ramp. had great looks. Yeah, USV's been right there. They just can't get those close ones to go down. They even make half of those. This is a completely different game right, right now. But give Kent credit where credit's due, and that's Kenton defensively, you know, stymie them a little bit off, you know, with their game plan, slowing down USV's offense. And then you got to give credit where credit's due at the offensive end. Kenton's ability to distribute the basketball and hit them open threes. Bo Sanders steps up to the Kenton Moose free throw line. He makes both of his shots. Those are his first points here of the half. Makes it 35-18 with nine seconds left to go. DeLong works against Alex Sanders and he's gonna be fouled. Yep, no, it's gonna be travel. a travel. DeLong took an extra step trying to get to the basket. So now USV, they're gonna to have to go the length of the court, but they have some time here to hopefully get off a clean shot. Alex Sanders gonna go quickly, four. Has this one poked away from behind, still got it. Had the shot go off, but it looked like one of the Kenton players got a piece of it, and that one's gonna fall short. After one half of play, Kenton on top, 35-18. We're gonna step aside, we'll be back with the second half. Listen. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard is brought to you by Crichton Aerial Applications. Crichton Aerial Applications provides you with custom liquid and granular crop applications, all from our innovative drone system. Check out our videos and information on our Facebook page, Crichton Aerial Applications. I'd also like to thank tonight's three-point sponsor, Home Savings and Loan of Kenton. Home Saving Loans of Kenton, committed to serving our community since 1888, offering infinite opportunities and services you can count on. Home Savings and Loan, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Welcome back to Reisner Court here at Upper Scioto Valley High School. I'm Nate Garlock alongside Darren Gilbert. And Gil just underway here in the third quarter and Kenton picking up right where they left off. Yeah, that doesn't, that doesn't help matters for USV to have Kenton come out and bomb a three the first 10 seconds here in this third quarter. And then come down with the turnover. And really, what we're seeing here in the early going is just a continuation of what that first half was. 
And we're going to have a foul on the inside. Gavin Payne is going to go to the Kenton Moose free throw line. You know, but Gil, it was pretty much what we're seeing. Turnovers and hot shooting from Kenton. And, and right now, USV really on their heels. You, know, you knew Coach White was going to go in and make some adjustments, but when you come out on that first possession and you are able to dagger a three-pointer and then immediately get a turnover, you know, that's what... Uh, and then <laughs> add two charity tosses and to absolutely. it. Absolutely. And uh, that was back back in the day. I, I used to help train my sister who ran cross country. And uh, we used to call... There's different moment in races that we would call the dream, dream crushers. And that's, that seemed like a dream crusher moment mm. right there. Big block there by Alex Sanders. And Alex Sanders trying to keep his team alive here. And in this one, Underwood lost that one. Feeds Bo Sanders underneath. He can't get it to go. Tough break there. Good luck. Just couldn't get it with his opposite hand. Banged it off the glass just a touch too hard. Here's Payne. Works into the lane. Gets it down into the corner. Yoder one-on-one -on -one against Sanders. Great extra pass. Ethan Yoder with the fantastic vision. Able to find a cutting Gavin Payne for two. Quick action now as USB comes down, tries to fire a shot up. That one's going to be no good. It's going to go out of bounds and back to the Wildcats. Great effort by the freshman there diving after that basketball. Even down 22 points here in the third quarter. That's great to see if you're the coach. Payne drops it down into the corner as Bo Sanders almost able to get his hands on that one. And then what went from looking like a potential turnover and a great play by Bo Sanders turns into a foul as he lost his footing, end up on top of Dawson Miller. Yeah, that's his third. But you know what, as a coach, you're going to let him play through it because you know what, he's being aggressive. He's you know, trying to make something positive happen. Yep, absolutely. And especially when you have to rely on a freshman for a lot of minutes, as you see Blaine Bouchon come up with a home savings and loan of Kenton three-pointer. That's his second of the game. But, you know, we're talking about Bo Sanders and the freshman getting a lot of minutes. You're going to have to let them play through these. And, and they're going to have to grow up quickly and they're going to have to learn from mistakes. And, you know, you kind of hope that even in games that may be getting lopsided on you, you can get a lot of teaching into these in these games. Yeah, a lot of growth can be taken by both ball clubs from this contest tonight. Shong, he's going to drive, goes off the glass high, and that one's no good. Underwood comes up with the rebound. Still a lot of basketball to play. USV, though, has to start cashing in on these stops that they get on the defensive end. Alex Sanders with the hustle play, but can't save that one as it goes out of bounds and back to Kent. Good effort by that young man going after it. Yeah, this is not the start that USV was looking for here in the third quarter. Looking for a towel to dry up the white or the wet spot there. And Coach White doing a little bit of everything tonight here for the Rams. You know, I think Kenton wants to shut the door here, and I think they want to get it done here by the by three quarters. And they're well on their way. USV is going to have to make a run, and it's going to have to come quick. Yeah, you got to think, Coach Miller. That message in the locker room was, "Let's go out here. Let's put this one away. Let's not let them hang around." And they're doing a good job of that here in the third. Extra pass to Bashong. He thought about the three-pointer for a minute. Kicks it down low to Yoder. Yoder fade away up and wow. good. Ethan Yoder is looking fantastic tonight. A little step back. Thirteen for the young man. There's Sanders gets it over to Bo. Bo gets rid of it. Underwood, he goes to cut. Thompson, right now, not a lot of space. Damron, he pulls up from the elbow. That one's no good. Alex Sanders hustles to save that one. Underwood tried to feed Thompson down low, but it gets taken away. Extra pass off to Bouchon, and unselfish play right now by the Canton Wildcats. Has them up big. We're going to have a timeout on the floor. We'll step aside as well and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's free throw sponsor is the Kenton Moose Family Center. Kenton Moose is Hardin County's home for great food, fellowship, and friends. That's the Kenton Moose 428 in Kenton and online at kentonmoose428.com. Welcome back. Timeout by USB as 
They have seen Kenton pick up right where they left off at the end of the first half. They've extended this lead out to 29 points with 5.03 left to go here in the third. Need a second to kind of catch their breath, try to regroup, see if they can't get this offense going. Sanders gets it over to Underwood. He's been busy. And right now, everything has had to be outside the perimeter. When they've tried to go to the inside, Kenton has been able to cut them off. They've, they've gotten hands on the basketball. They've been able to force turnovers. And when you got to play that far away from the basket, it's usually not a recipe for success. Three-pointer on its way. That one's no good. Sanders tried to get the rebound, and Payne reached in, got some contact. Gavin Payne just picked up his third. Gavin Payne, seven points on the night. He's going to go to the bench. You see Piper come in. Dawson Miller is going to check out as Blaine Bouchon checks back in as well. Underwood gets it out to Sanders. Passes along to Thompson. A little bit of a trouble with that time with the dribble by Kendall. Can't able to maintain it. Alex Sanders in the lane, fights for the loose ball. That one's going to be no good, but Underwood able to track it down. Extra pass to Bo Sanders on the inside. He can't get it to go, but he's going to make a trip to the free throw line. He was two for two in the first half. And he's going to look to add to that as he steps up to the Kenton Moose free throw line. Yeah, I think they got Johnston on that one, his second. Corbin Johnson has two on the nine as Bo Sanders leaves that one short. And we're gonna have a lane violation as Gillespie was looking to try to switch sides as the officials are gonna get together because Gillespie definitely stepped in right as the ball was releasing from the official. So I'm not even sure what that would result in. Be a vi it'd be a vi be a reshoot violation. Even if you haven't shot already. Yeah. So no extra. No. You know you don't get to keep the basketball. You don't. There, there's nothing extra that you get there. Just Good a chance piece to reset fishing. and do it. Good job by Tony and. Bo can't connect on either one of his free throws. Brayton getting together right there. Ethan Yoder with the rebound moves it up. Johnson immediately met by a couple of different Rams. That caused him to shuffle the feet a bit. He's going to get called for the travel. 3.59 left to go here in the third. Underwood with the basketball for USV. Brings it up, gets it into the hands of Sanders. As the Rams right now continue just to try to run their offense beyond the perimeter, hoping for one of these lanes to open up. And again, the defense of Kenton going to force a turnover. Yoder took a big slide that time, but no travel as Kenton was able to maintain the possession, and they're going to reset. Johnson trying to find an open spot. Shong in the corner was left all alone. Can't get that one to go down. High off the back of the backboards. So going to go back to the Rams. So Kenton is leaving the window open for USV. Right now, though, the Rams just cannot find any sort of rhythm on offense. Well, it's no secret. You know, as, as number two and number 23 go, so do the to the Rammies. And right now, either one of them don't have the hot hand, and it appears nobody else wants to shoot the basketball. Well, then right on cue, Alex Sanders finds some space. He's able to get to the rim for two. Alex with just his fourth point here of the night. Yoder's had a great game, gets rid of it. Now he gets it back. Extra pass down into the corner. Gillespie's gonna run baseline, has this one knocked out of bounds. It'll stay with the Wildcats. Substitution coming into the game for USV. You see Damron come in. Bo Sanders is gonna check out. Gillespie looking for somewhere to go with the basketball. Gets rid of it. Sean reverses it, gets it back. Looked like he thought about the three for just a second before getting it down into the corner. Nice job by the Kenton defense. They're in this man-to-man, -man, at times, looks like a box and one type defense. They're just trying to see if they can't fill space and keep Kenton from getting to the inside. Right now, though, the inside play of Kenton's not really the problem. They've had a hot hand from behind the arc. Sure. Arm. Yeah, that's, that definitely hasn't helped USB's cause, has it? 
Gillespie cut off along the baseline. Deshaun for three. That one's going to be no good. Great rebound by Johnson. Johnson can't get the put back. Ends up back into the hands of Damron. He's going to push the tempo. At least it looked like for a second. Kind of slowed things up. And here's Underwood. He's going to run under the basket. Off the glass. Rattles in. And good job protecting himself from the defender and the basketball right there. Keeping that basketball away from the defender. Knocking it in on the reverse layup. So just the fourth point here um, in the quarter for USV. Got to get a little bit more offense here before they head to the fourth. Johnson just going to be patient, pulls it down. As Kenton doesn't go with the full trap, just, just give it a little bit of space. Then this is where Kenton, you don't need to shoot the ball at this particular time. Let the clock be your friend. Johnson gets it down to the strong down in the corner. Clock continues to run. This one gets knocked out of bounds. It'll stay with the Wildcats. Dawson Miller coming into the game for Kenton. They got a few too many guys on the floor. And they got it figured out now as Gillespie's going to go out, take a seat. Quick hands by Kendall down there in the corner, just trying to create something. Got too much contact, though, and he's going to get whistled for the foul. That's his first, just the third team foul, second team foul here in the corner, or quarter for USV. It was in the corner there, too. It was Bichon. <laughs> and it's going to be over the back as Miller caught it and carried it into the back back court so a turnover fortunate play for the Rams they're gonna have an opportunity here with a minute 10 to maybe see if they can't possibly get two possessions or more before the quarter ends here's Kendall looks it around to Underwood and you've got to think that USC is gonna have to go with a sense of urgency here Damron catch and shoot by Underwood no good Loose ball ends up back in the hands of Kendall. Kendall with the drive, get through some contact. He hits the floor, and he's going to make a trip to the Kenton Moose free throw line. Yeah, that one right there, the Wildcats broke down defensively. A couple missed box out situations right there. Going to give up or side of battle an opportunity here with uh, two free throws, and the clock stopped. Tonight's free throws are brought to you by the Kenton Moose Family Center. The Kenton Moose is Hardin County's home for great food, fellowship, and friends. That's the Kenton Moose 428 in Kenton. Online at kentonmoose428.com. Andrew Kendall not able to connect on his first. He'll have one more. And that one doesn't fall. Piper comes up with the rebound. Gets it across midcourt, picks up his dribble, passes off to Yoder. Yoder has had an excellent game tonight. Been quiet here of late, and that one gets blocked out of bounds by Sanders. 47-22, all Kenton here tonight so far. Miller inbounds it to Bashan. Fight for the loose ball, great hustle by Kendall, but Kenton able to maintain possession. Team Kent not really have to be patient or really want to be patient here all night. Johnstown, Johnston, excuse me, that time a little bit of a hurry up on the hesitation move. Gets in a wide open lane, able to finish. He's going to get the and one opportunity from the Kenton Moose free throw line. Strong move on the dribble drive, but exceptionally strong taking the ball to the rim and getting the old fashioned and one. It's now three points on the night for Johnston. I think they got Kendall partner on that one, his third. You are correct, Kendall now. Three fouls as Johnson makes the and one. Pass inside. Sanders was trying to find a cutting Thompson. That one gets knocked out of bounds. It'll stay with USV with 16.9 seconds left to go here in the quarter. Underwood triggers the inbounds from underneath his own basket. Gets it out to Sanders. 13 seconds left to go. He spins into the lane. 
Nice move by Sanders, hangs on the rim and goes down. Strong take there, nice finish with the left hand, shielding Yoder away from the basketball. Kendall almost able to take that one away. And that one's gonna go out of bounds and that'll bring the third quarter to a close. Kenton still on top, they have the 26 point lead. They're on top 50 to 24. We'll step aside and be back on WOSA. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is Crichton Aerial Applications. Crichton Aerial Applications provides you with custom liquid and granular crop applications, all from our innovative drone system. Check out our videos and information on our Facebook page, Crichton Aerial Applications. Welcome back to Reisner Court. Fourth quarter just about underway here. Nate Garlock alongside Darren Gilbert. And Gil, so far there has been no answer for that Kenton defense as USV's offense just continues to struggle. Some of it's self-inflicted. Some of it is some great defense from Kenton. USD quarter score so far, 9-9. And in the third quarter where they needed to come out and give themselves an opportunity and, and have some answers, it was their lowest scoring quarter so far of the game, only six points. And those come late, you know? What they get for those late in the last minute, minute and a half of the, of the quarter? So, yeah, that's, that's a tribute to Kenton's, you know, game plan, their shooting, and their execution. So Johnson though, just picked up his third foul. Alex Sanders is gonna go to the Kenton Moose free throw line to shoot two. First shot is up. That one's off the back of the iron and no good. You know, this young man's coming in, you know, now, now this was a two game stat, but he was averaging 10 free throw attempts per contest. So he's been getting to the foul line. That is his first trip tonight though, and he goes one for two. Long pass to Yoder. Yoder able to gather it in, tried to make the extra pass down low to Payne. Kendall comes up with the basketball, almost lost it off his own foot. But nice recovery. As the USV now has an opportunity to try to see if they can't cut into this lead. They're gonna need some points here quickly in this fourth quarter. Sanders looks to drive, has to get rid of it. Kendall gonna carry it. Nice shot, look from Thompson. That one rattles around, can't get the home court bounce. Good look by Thompson along the baseline, about 12 feet, just left a little bit short. Good look though for the Rams. Three pointer on its way from Payne. He can't get it to go down. Damron able to tip it to himself. He's gonna move quickly into the front court. Deep three try by Underwood. That one's no good. And so far tonight, with as many three-pointers as we've seen USB take. They've so only been able to connect on two, and that has also played a big uh, contribution to why this score looks the way that it does here currently. Yeah, they didn't hit him tonight, and Kenton has rattled some in. See Kendall right there. Right and gets there. his fourth. Yeah, you are correct. So Bo Sanders coming back into the game. Kendall stay in with his four fouls. Piper gets the pass. Yoder's gonna try the long three-point try. That one's no good. Nice hustle play by Payne, but ends up into the hands of the Rams. Sanders gonna push it up ahead. Gets it over to Dameron, back to Sanders. Sanders head fake, kicks it out. And we're gonna have a foul. I think they got Yoder on hand check. And they do. Ethan Yoder, just his first. But the good news for USV, if they can continue to be aggressive, maybe they can get a few more fouls here in this quarter. Get to that magic number of five. But prior to that, we're gonna have a timeout. Kenton on top, 50 to 25. Coach Miller wants to talk about it with his team. We'll step aside and be back on WOSA. Welcome back. Tonight's three-point sponsor is the Home Savings and Loan of Kenton. Home Savings and Loan of Kenton is committed to serving our community since 1888 offering infinite opportunities and services you can count on. Home Savings and Loan, member FDIC, equal housing lender. 5.59 left to go in this one. Kenton in control, but USV trying to claw their way back. Underwood takes the inbounds over to Sanders. 
as the Rams just trying to find something here on offense to give themselves a little bit of a spark. Bo Sanders in some trouble, able to drop it off to Alex. And right now, they just kind of dribbling themselves into one another. That three-point try, no good. Great hustle by Bo Sanders to keep that one alive, but ends up on the floor for his trouble. Payne takes the pass. He's able to catch it in the air and drop it in for two. Nice pass there, nice little alley-oop. Soft catch off the glass. Does it really count as an alley-oop, Gil? Counts as if an you assist. See, if you don't, if we'll you don't give put it an it assist. In. All right. Figured I'd get, you, know, you would be the expert to one, you know. That's, you're Jordan, the one we want to call it a lob. We can, we can probably talk, call it a lob. And we'll give okay. it that. We'll, took the lob off the glass for two. Another substitution coming into the game as Damron checks it back in. Or a pitch, catch, and shoot in one motion. How's that? A little bit of moisture on the floor, so they're trying to get that cleaned up and dried for the keep playing here. It has been Kenton pretty much from the very start. They got off to the quick, um, quick start. We talked about how important that was going to be for the Wildcats. Got off to a slow one last night. Got themselves into a hole that they just couldn't dig themselves out of in their loss to cold water. Expected a little bit more fire out of the Rams, though, tonight. You know, coming off of a big win against Lincoln View. Thought they'd come in here, this rivalry game, ready to go. Not sure if it's tired legs. These back-to-back -back early in the seasons can be difficult. You know, you condition, you're in the gym, you're doing shoot-arounds, but nothing really compares to being out on the court and playing the games, especially when you, you have a short bench like USB does. Right. You know, so I, not quite, I don't have their schedule in front of me. Not sure if they did a back-to-back -back last weekend as well. But back-to-back -back here this weekend, it might just be a little bit of tired legs for USD tonight. Well, you know, and give give credit where credit's due. I mean, Kenton come in with a with a positive game plan with that one-two-two, you know, slowing it down at the the half court, and they made some shots, and you just saw another one right there. And Dawson Miller connecting on the home savings and loan of Kenton three-pointer. We have another stoppage though. It's, it's a little warm in the gym. Gil, I don't know if you felt it or not. Uh, you look yeah, pretty but, comfortable over well, there I do all now. night long. I do now. But a uh, little bit, little hot. It's a little, little hot. A little, yeah. little, little extra sweat going on for everybody. Perspiration. So floor taking a little bit of an extra drying tonight. And both teams have, you know, laid it on the line. It's not, it's not a lack of effort tonight. You know, it's just one team hit, hit, hit them a lot of shots, especially from the three-point line. And uh, the other team struggled. And it come right out from the shoot for USB. They struggled. Right from the get-go, you know, missed some chippies early and dug themselves a hole and just never could regroup and Kent wouldn't let him get, let him get on a run. 7-0 run currently for Kenton as they push their lead out to 57-25. So a nice steal right there from Payne as he was able to finish. Turnaround jumper no good. Yoder with the rebound. Sanders right there continuing to play tight defense. Got his hands on that one. Knocked it out of bounds. It'll go to the Kenton Wildcats. Saw so Caden Lowry had came into the game for USV. Gets checked out. All the way to the glass for Johnston. He's going to be fouled. Make another trip to the Kenton Moose free throw line. Yeah, if that's Kendall, I believe that's his fifth. Wayne to see, you're, and you're correct. Kendall just fouled out of the game with his fifth foul. So we saw Lowry check out last time down the floor. He is quickly back in. What Kendall end up with, partner? Six. So super unofficial. I have him down for three okay. tonight. See the freshman, Caden Lowry, coming in. So not only is USB a little shallow on their bench, but they're also very young. See two freshmen currently out on the floor in Caden Lowry and Bo Sanders. Lowry with the basketball, gets it over to Sanders. Kicks it down low to Alex. Extra pass, Lowry for three. That one's good. Caden Lowry coming off the bench. He's getting in the scorebook with a home saving and loan of Kenton three-pointer. Good looking release there by the young man. Good kick out pass after the double team inside to Alex Sanders. He kicked it out. 
Off the hands of Yoder, into the hands of Alex Sanders. They're going to run the floor. Bo Sanders attacks. Can't get the whistle that time. And here's Payne. He drops it over. Gillespie back into the game for Kenton. He had it there momentarily. Three-pointer on its way, and that one's good. As Steven Piper has a home savings and loan of Kenton three-pointer. That is his third of the game. Sanders, a couple of head fakes, decides to go to the rim, can't get it to go down. Bo Sanders comes up with the rebound. There's Caden Lowry, turn around, that one gets sent out. As Gavin Payne has the big rejection. More substitutions coming in for both teams. Get you the numbers as they kind of turn and I can see them. Looks like number 50, which is going to be Bill Wilkinson, came in for Kenton, as did number 10. And number 10 is Lucas Anderson. And then for Kenton, they're only substituting number five, Carter, o Carter Oglesby, it came in, and then they had Mason Thompson come back in with him. Lowry's three-point try, no good. Nice rebound by Bo Sanders, but that one gets taken away. Sanders getting on the ground, but can't come up with it. Yeah, Bo Sanders tonight has had a nice game on the glass. Bill Wilkinson can't get that one to go down. Lowry comes up with the rebound, and we're going to have a foul. Bill Wilkinson comes in, picks up his first foul. More substitutions for the Wildcats. Number 22. That is going to be Braylon Wyoming. And number 24, Trenton DeLong. Got a little bit of time there in the second quarter. He checks back into the game. Oglesby looking for some where to go with the basketball. Has to put it on the floor, drops it off to Damron. Here's Lowry. All right now USB just working that perimeter, trying to move it around. These young guys trying to get some quality time here towards the end of the game. You know, and that's what I'm thinking. No team ever wants to have a lopsided loss. You just don't. You don't. You, you, you don't you don't ever go in and trying to say, oh, let's look at the bright side. However, you're trying to be objective about it. The one good thing it does, especially early in the season, is you get minutes on the floor with your young guys in your back of the bench. Because you never know, especially as the season goes on, when you're going to need to call on them. You betcha. And if it's in a big game in a big moment, you're going to be hoping that they had some time on the floor. This one's going to go out of bounds. And we both know sports is a very humbling game. It very no, much You is. know, no matter what sport you play, and you, know, you can either regroup you know, you can fold the tents. And if you're up or so to Valley, you're going to regroup. I know the coaches too well. They know the players too well. They have a rich tradition for basketball. If you're at Kenton, you build on this. You know, after taking a tough one on the chin last night, you come over here and dominate the game and walk out of here with a solid uh, plus margin. And you prepare for next week's contest. Yeah, if you're Coach Ryan Miller, you have to be happy because you have to think that that message last night after that game was we can't allow ourselves to get down like that. We can't wait to get started anymore. And that's going to be the focus going into tomorrow night or tonight, whenever he delivered that message. And they responded. His team heard him. They came out. They were shooting the ball great in that first half. They never let up. And they're coming away with a big victory here tonight. Huge victory, holding USV to 30. That one went off of a Kenton player. Bo Sanders did a nice job of bouncing that off of him. Still out there playing hustle basketball. Lowry looking for somewhere to go with it. Ends up with the basketball back, working against DeLong. Feeds it inside to Bo. Bo, jumper no good, 20 seconds left to go. Kenton with the basketball now as number 11 Jesse, or excuse me, number 11, Maddox Hommel for Kenton into the game. Final 10 seconds, knocking off the clock. As Kenton will dribble this one out, and they are going to win 60 to 30. We're going to step aside. We'll be back to wrap this one up. Don't go anywhere. You're watching Boys High School Basketball on WOSN.
Welcome back. Tonight's three point uh, sponsor is the Home Savings and Loan of Kenton. Home Savings and Loan of Kenton committed to serving our community since 1888, offering infinite opportunities and services you can count on. Home Savings and Loan, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Welcome back to Reisner Court, where a big victory for the Kenton Wildcats as they come in to USV's home court. They double them up 60 to 30. And Gil, I mean, right from the start, Kenton came in and they really left no doubt from the first couple minutes of this game all the way to the final buzzer. Well, they dictated the tempo of the game, you know. Um, upper, you know, had a couple three-point blank shots that didn't hit early. Kenton come down, scored, set the tone defensively. Upper had a difficult time breaking that pressure, and it, were, it was really token. It was like a half court just to slow him down, but the game plan worked to perfection, and Kent just kept building and making shots, and you know, USV got behind the eight ball and just couldn't get in closer. They didn't, Kenton didn't allow USV any runs, and that, what a nice win for Kenton, you know, on the road after last night, you know, their bugaboo against Coldwater, come back tonight and, and win a county rivalry game the, the way they did, uh, a lot of credit has to go to them. Absolutely. Rivalry games are always fun. We had another good one here tonight as the Kenton Wildcats make the short trip down at 309. They come away with the Hardin County rivalry win, and I am sure that USV will be marking it on their calendars. They can't wait for the return. One final time from Reisner Court. The Kenton Wildcats come away with a big victory over the USV Rams. For Darren Gilbert, I've been Nate Garlock. Have a great night, everybody.